Hey, this is your daily prayer for July 2nd, 2020. I'm TJ Piccolo, and I am feeling unsettled. I don't know about y'all, but um, right now, with Nashville going to phase two, with our country experiencing a lot of unrest, uh, I feel weird. And I'm just trying to, you know, sit with that and just feel that. And I hope whatever space you're in, you're doing the same. Um, but that doesn't make it any less challenging, right? Hey, I want to continue um, something I've been expressing in my past uh, daily prayer videos. If you haven't looked at them, I encourage you to do so, so you can kind of understand where I'm coming from with this. But I want to continue um, talking about things that have to do with anti-racism. And recently, I've been I've been doing that 21 uh, day race equity challenge, and we talked about um, white fragility and one of the things the speaker was saying was talking about how she finds it strange that there's not really a sense of loss um when it's weird how why white people don't express to one another that there is a sense of loss if it's just a room of white people so if it's a school of white people or a church of white people or um, just a space filled with white people, how we're not like looking at each other going like, wow, something is lost here because we don't have other uh, people of color here, other culture here. We're not, it's strange that we don't experience loss um, with that. And so that's, that stirred something within um, people in, in my group and, and in myself as well, just how do we expand, you know, from white spaces how do, and, and how do we do that gracefully and not aggressively and turning it into a white space all those complicated things just but to keep it simple for now how do we kind of get out of our only white spaces and how do we do that in a pandemic <laughs> right that's really hard and I don't really have a good answer I'm not gonna pretend that this daily prayer has the magic answer but I do want to encourage one thing that crossed my mind one thing that could be very helpful in a very small way that I want to encourage and that is black owned businesses um, there's a lot of black owned businesses in Nashville and I've seen a lot of threads going around during this time to support those black owned businesses and um, yeah I again it's a small way but I think that's a way where we can get out of our white space invest some money into what uh, black entrepreneurs are doing and um, experience some culture in a way that's I think good and appropriate um, and if so I'm gonna say a, a couple there's there's a ton of black businesses I encourage you to do the work research that I'm gonna read a bunch of them to you right now um, but again, there's a ton. There's, there's bakeries. There's places that specialize in dessert, hot chicken, vegan restaurants, um, the Jamaican restaurant, Jamaica way. Um, anyway, I'm going to read some of these to you. And I, and I want to encourage you to check out some of these places if, if you have the financial means right now. Um, because although I'm not quite sure each restaurant and bakery all, all these places are doing different things to accommodate to um, their standards in, in, in the face of the pandemic so I don't know if some of these places are open in terms of seating but I'm sure most of these places uh, do curbside pickup or um, or pickup in general or even delivery so it's worth but if you can do curbside pickup because I think it would be cool for some of these places if you were to go do pickup, you it may take you to a place in Nashville that you aren't familiar with, a place that may not be a white space that gets us out of our context. Um, and part of the reason I'm also saying <clears throat> black owned businesses, especially places that do food, is because there's something in our, you know, in the Christian tradition that there's something spirit, deeply spiritual and sacred about gathering around food. We do it all the time at youth group. <clears throat> we break bread together like Jesus and the disciples in a way, right? 
So I encourage you to go pick up food from one of these places and make this meal a spiritual experience. Prayerfully look at your anti-racist resources or think or talk about them at the table together over this meal. Or if you're a young family, <clears throat> have a meal about or have a conversation about race over the meal. Um, I had I read an article the other day that I thought was really interesting. It was called Seeing, Noticing, and Talking About Difference with Young Children. And <clears throat> they, it, it was helpful to me because it was, how do you start a conversation with a young child about race? And the author encouraged um, the readers to ask, <clears throat> the first question would be, where does skin color come from? And, you know, there's a lot of different answers like, you know, my mom, just my mom, or, you know, something like that. But the, the, it's then, you know, take the conversation to facts. You know, skin color comes from melanin and the sun and where our ancestors are from and whether that place is cool or hot. And, and just start there and then kind of, as you progress, have, have the conversation come to a point where you, you know, you make it clear that skin color doesn't make someone good or bad or smart or dumb or decide what someone likes to do. It doesn't indicate or determine any of that, right? It's a good conversation. And what that does is if you go into that conversation, and it's an uncomfortable one to have. Even me doing this right now is very uncomfortable. But if we do that, if we do our best to do it as fearlessly as we can, um, it, it helps let our kids know that this is an okay conversation to have, that this isn't a taboo topic, that this isn't something we, oh, we, we don't talk about this, got it. No, this encourages, like, this is something that can be brought up again. So not only is it having the conversation uh, in the content good it's also it's good that you're having the conversation because that is what plants the seeds to let it be ongoing which is what this is anti-racist work is ongoing we're never gonna reach this peak and be like ah done anyway okay i'm gonna read a couple of these places to y'all um bakeries and desserts the cupcake collection colonel's nashville sugar high cafe Hi-Fi Cookies, The Peach Cobbler Factory of Nashville, The Cake Project, uh, High Class Sweets, Sugar Lips Bakery, okay? Those are some bakeries and desserts. Restaurants, Ghost Wings, Slim and Husky's Pizza Beeria, uh, Coneheads, Brother Z's Wangs, The Southern V Vegan, oh, that's a vegan place, um, Slow Burn Hot Chicken, Sugar High Cafe, which I said earlier, uh, Smoke Signals Barbecue, Radical Rabbit, Bolton's Spicy Chicken and Fish, Bolton's is, I like Bolton's, uh, Doll's Family Cafe, Bailey and Kato's, My Iron Skillet, Big Al's Deli, Rhythm and Spice, Prince's Hot Chicken Shack, um, and of course, Prince's, come on, right? I love hot chicken. Um, Lafayette Soup Company, um, which is at the Richland Park Farmer's Market, Surreal Spice Creations, uh, Seafood Sensations, 2719 Jefferson Street, 400 Degrees Hot Chicken, Kingdom Cafe and Grill, Ed's Fish House, Legion's House of Seafood, and Pluckers. Okay, and then Restaurants and Catering, this is the last little bit, Sip and Bite, Cal's Country Kitchen, Hurt's Hot Chicken, It's a Philly Thing, Silver Sands Cafe, Max Hot Chicken, Jamaica Way, Germantown Pub, The Tasty Wheel, Wildman Smoothies, Eight Hours Barbecue, Big Shakes Chicken and Fish, Veggie Village, Local Distro, Veggie Delicious Cafe, Moore's Hot Chicken, Granddaddy's Famous Hot Chicken, Bars Music City, Ooh Wee Barbecue, Fat Boys Barbecue, Amy's Ethiopian Cafe. I really want to try that Ethiopian Cafe. Caribbean uh, Splash Reggae Cafe and Car Wash. Okay. I, there's probably even more than that. And I'm really sorry. I was reading those fast. So I'm really sorry if I pronounced any of those wrong. But those are some places to check out. I, if you have the financial means, 
I encourage you to do so. And again, if you can't eat there or you don't feel comfortable eating there, at least go pick it up and, and try to get out of your space and bring it back with you. Make it an intentional experience as you gather around the food and remember what you're doing this for. I, our faith <laughs> uh, guides us to do anti-racism work, okay? Anti-racist work. All right, I'm gonna say a quick prayer that I always say when, I used to say as a kid right before we would eat grace, and I, I'm gonna give that to you, <laughs> pray us out. I'm so good at talking today. I'm going to pray us out with that, and then I hope this has been helpful. All right, let's pray. God is great, God is good, and we thank God for our food. By God's hands we all are fed, Give us, Lord, our daily bread. Amen.